Hello everyone, my name is Lisa. I'm one of the speech and language therapists who work in the department and I'm going to be talking today a little bit about dummies. If you've seen a speech and language therapist recently or in the past, you'll know that it's one of the questions that we always ask, does your child use a dummy? And my aim today is just to reiterate the advice that you will have been given and just try and show you perhaps with a little demonstration why we, why we say what we do. We're not just trying to put dummy manufacturers out of business. So when babies are born, by and large, they have a very strong sucking reflex and the dummy can be a godsend. You know, um, it does what it says on the dummy tin. It calms them down. So it soothes, soother, it pacifies, it slows their rate of breathing and in calming them down, it's leading to that all important sleep. Sleep for them, sleep for you. But as they develop, they're becoming more aware of their surroundings, they're gaining more skills, and they're beginning to delight and experiment in making sounds, okay? Cooing, gurgling, giggling, blowing raspberries, chuckling, babbling, leading to that all-important prize at the end, those real words, okay? And we don't want to stop that. We don't want to stop that two-way communication. Now, I'm not saying that a dummy can't still be useful. It can be useful for that fretful child, the little one who's having trouble teething, a poorly little one, or someone who's just having a touch of the inconsolables and you don't know why. A dummy has its place. But for all the other times in the waking day, so I'm thinking about going along in the buggy, in the car, in the bath, enjoying a book with you, playing on the mat, in the garden, shopping trolley. It's not needed at that point. The child doesn't need to be soothed. It needs to be still experimenting and enjoying that two-way communication with you. So, a quick mention about dribbling. Um, some of the parents that we talk to say that their child still dribbles a little bit. Wet, wet t-shirt, sore chin. Um, and an awful lot of those children, and by no means all of them, but a lot of them will be children who will perhaps overuse a dummy. And whether that's that they're accustomed to having um, a slightly open mouth posture that we call it, where the mouth doesn't really close, there's only one place dribbles going then, or that the lip seal isn't quite as good as the next child, so they dribble. Get rid of the dummy, get rid of the dribbling. Quick mention about teeth. Uh, we know that children who overuse a dummy also get what we call um, an open bite. Um, and you can see that in, in this photograph here, where the top teeth are bowing up and the bottom teeth are bowing down a little bit. Again, it's, it's not something that you can remedy. Um, when the second teeth come through, hopefully they will be um, straight. Um, but actually in this picture here, these, these bottom teeth are, are second teeth. They are adult teeth and they're still slightly bowed. Um, and then we come to the fourth thing, which as a mainstream therapist working in nurseries and schools, it's, it's probably the thing that, that concerns me the most about overusing a dummy, um, and that's the speech sound development. Okay. Now this is the audience participation bit, but you can do it in the um, privacy of your own kitchen. I, however, am going to be doing it here. Uh, so what I want you to do when I've when I've finished, is I would like you to go to the kitchen, wash your hands thoroughly, as we do, um, and get yourself um, a clean teaspoon. Okay, here's one I prepared earlier. So, um, actually the, the size of the teaspoon compared to an adult mouth is, is not a bad ratio compared to a dummy in a child's mouth. I find it a little bit uncomfortable because actually uh, I keep clanging my teeth on it. So I'm actually gonna use the handle. What you're gonna do is uh, with your teaspoon, you're gonna hold it very firmly because I don't want any unwarranted trips to A&E. Um, this is your dummy and you are going to recite Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are. Okay, as I say, you can do it in the privacy of your own house. I'm gonna demonstrate here. I want you to listen really carefully to what's happening to those speech sounds. Okay, let's give it a go. Quinkle, quinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay, so when you do it, I want you to do it a few times and I want you to really feel where your tongue is and how difficult it is to access all the parts of your mouth that you need to in order to make those sounds. Let's think specifically about a couple of particular sounds. Let's think about the t in twinkle, okay? Twinkle, quinkle, quinkle. I can't make a t, 
it's going too far back and I'm making a k sound instead. Let's think about the d sound, how I wonder, okay? Wunga, wunga. It's gone too far back again, hasn't it? And it's becoming a g. So we know that those t and d sounds can be tricky to make with a dummy in and you get what we call backing where the back of your tongue is doing the work and it, those sounds are coming out as a k and a g. Now, as a child's speech sound system progresses, they start to use more sophisticated sounds, the long sounds, um, sounds like s, z, sh, for instance. Let's think what happens to that sound in star. Star, star. I can, I can put my tongue all over my mouth, but I can't make a proper s sound with it. And you get what, what me, we might refer to as a slushy S. It's more of a sh sound than a s sound. Children will even do it coming out the sides of their mouths a little bit sometimes, a sh type sound as well. Now, take it from me, that particular articulation error can be very, very difficult to get rid of. Very difficult. Now then, if you could ask your 18 month old the question, what would you prefer? Would you prefer a couple of days of sadness because mum's taken the dummy away? And statistics show that actually it generally is only two to three days of that child uh, whinging for it. Or would you prefer to come to speech and language therapy for two, three, four years having speech therapy? I think I know what they would say. So what I'm saying is use the dummy wisely. When they're an infant, you're the one in charge. They don't ask for that dummy, you give them it. Don't set up that expectation that that dummy should be in there all the time. You're in control. Have you watched a two and a half year old tantrum for their dummy? By that stage, we've lost control. They're in control. So, use the dummy wisely. Please dump it as soon as you can. And uh, thank you for watching. And go and play with your teaspoon. Thank you.